All right, on this day we're talking about rational exponents, and here's how rational exponents work. The denominator of an exponent will always be the power of the root, the index of the root. So if I'm going to change the form here on part A, I'm going to go ahead and make a root symbol. I'm going to go ahead and write my base of A inside there. Now, i got to fill in two pieces of information. This will be the seventh root because seven's the denominator, so I'm going to put a little seven on this little notch of the root, and it'll be a inside there will be to the first power because that was the numerator, and I've changed form into radical form. On part B, I'm going to really quick write in a couple pieces of information on this problem that aren't written that are just assumed. Because it says square root, it's to the second index on the root, and w will be to the first power. Now I'm ready to convert it into exponential form. So I'm going to write w as my base and put a little fraction bar here because I had a root. Now the denominator of my exponent will be the 2, the index of the root. And whatever your power is inside here goes on the numerator, just like so. On your assignment, this will be similar to the first four problems that you'll see. All right, on example two, the instruction really matters, so it says to evaluate. Usually I prefer my students to think of, when you see the word evaluate, you should be grabbing the calculator and really using it. Because what I can do here is type in 49th and raise it in the calculator to the negative one half power. And I'm just typing in negative one divided by two in the exponent. And it spits out your answer. Now, you do want to answer with a fraction if you need to. So here I would hit the math key, which is right here, and hit enter on convert to fraction. And that's going to be one seventh. By the way, the exponent key was right here above the division key. I did that kind of quick. So one seventh would be my answer for part A. For part B, it's as simple as typing in 16 and then the power key, 3 fourths. So 16, I just hit that power key above the division and now I'm going to type in 3 divided by 4 for 3 fourths and hit enter and I get 8. So there's my answers. Now what I'm going to do is show you, well, where did those answers come from? So for part A, um, here's what you could have done by hand is first of all move the 49 to the half to the denominator because of the negative exponent and now change the 49 as a base to 7 squared. And the reason why I identified 7 is because when I square it, it's going to interact well with this 1 half over here when I multiply those exponents. So that will be 1 over 7 to the 2 times 1 half, which is 7 to the first power. Now that's what happened inside the calculator to get your answer. Uh, next thing I'll do is B by hand, um, but you don't have to do these by hand, just use the calculator if you feel more comfortable with that. 16 to the 3 fourths. So I'm going to think of something that could be raised to the fourth power to be 16, which would be 2. 2 to the fourth power is 16. And more often it's like my honors levels kids, I'm expecting to change these bases and do what I'm doing by hand. And then this would be 2 to the 4 times 3 fourths, which would be 2 to the 3rd whenever I multiply 4 with 3 fourths. Now 2 to the 3rd is 8, and that's your answer. For really, what I'm wanting you to do here is just use the calculator, get comfortable with using it for evaluate. This is what you're going to be doing on problems 5 through 9 on the assignment that I'm pairing with this. All right, for the other problems that say simplify, you apply the exponent rules that we've already learned about up to this point. So for instance on part A where I'm multiplying this base of y together I'm going to have y be to the 1 7th plus 4 7th and that goes back to day one on this unit where when we multiply we add our exponents together to get it. So that would be y to the 5 7th. Remember you gotta have a lock, you have to have like denominator there and you've got to uh, m make sure that you add the numerators. Don't change the denominator when you add. You can also use your calculator if you're uncomfortable. You just type into it 1 7th plus 4 7th, and uh, it'll spit out 5 7 for you. All right, next thing is uh, the x to the negative 2 thirds. What's going to happen there is because of the negative exponent, you're going to move that to the denominator, 1 over x to the 2 thirds. Now that it's a positive exponent, that would actually be good, and we're going to stop it right there. 
Now I am going to point out, sometimes they uh, prefer that this be not a root right here, so you have to work with that a little bit if it's multiple choice. But that's something I'll go over in class and I can talk to you during Smart Lunch. For um, Foundations Math 2, I'm actually just going to leave it right here as my final answer. Just to give you a heads up, uh, the last four problems I'm giving you on the homework, numbers 13, 14, uh, 40 and 41 get pretty complicated pretty quick. I'm expecting to have to go over those in detail the next day that you're back. So please let me know what questions you got on the assignment and uh, let's get ready to finish up this unit. Thank you.